Hey, what's up guys, Rev here. So today we're going to return to another discussion about the design of female video game characters. Because oh, recently boy. we've seen a very concerning set of statements coming from, from Microsoft directing their developers to avoid making female video game characters with curvy aesthetics. Now this is something that is concerning because that's not something that gamers want to see. And people have been praising more curvy and attractive female character designs like that of Eve from the upcoming release of Stellar Blade. However, speaking of very attractive... Like, I don't understand it. Why the hell do we need to start policing how our characters look in video games? ...attractive and quite nearly irresistible designs. Guys, it's time to check out my new official <laughs> Red Fumo that is live the minute this video has been released. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, just in time for Easter, here is my limited edition Aww, Red that's cute. Bunny Fumo. As with any makeshift campaign, this is a limited time offer, and you can see the beautiful prototype that I received yeah, yeah, on full display yeah. right here, looking smug with the bunny ears, a great combo as always. And with makeshift, you know the quality is top of the line. You guys went absolutely insane when I released because my some people first can't keep Fumo them to themselves. Year, yeah, and here is another. This is a really to cute plushie. A new Rev Fumo, or to add to the Rev Fumo verse with this new bunny themed version. This will be available, like I said, for a few weeks. I will put a link to this in the pinned comment, so make sure to check this out before it is gone. Now, returning to the topic for today. Oh, yeah. So recently. There this all started because of Stellar Blade, because people are, like, too busy uh, drooling over the character, huh? There's been a lot of discussion about female character types in terms of their design, and a lot of people have been praising Stellar Blade because they are featuring what a lot of gamers want, and that is an attractive female main Sex! protagonist. Sex! Let's and go! The developers... <laughs> I mean, who would have guessed that sex sells? Totally not Genshin Impact or Honkai Star Rail or Honkai the Third. Totally nah. And the directors from Shift Up, the studio responsible for Stellar Blade, have been unapologetic about their focus on the. I don't want to see something normal. I want to see something more ideal. Huh. The attractiveness of this character and also fan service shots of this character. They want to create yeah, what's something wrong with that, that gamers want to see. Something that is beautiful. <laughs> like, what is wrong with having something ideal? Uh, like, it's a video game. If you, like, if you can't have ideal or perfect or something that you think is beautiful in a video game, where can you have it? Like, huh? What? Like, now, of course, Seriously? Cook Brutus here gives us a very helpful walk into today's main topic. Which way, Western man? Do you want to go with the attractive <laughs> design of characters like Eve from Stellar Blade? Or do you want this disturbing new standard that apparently is going to be more of the mainstream moving forward? Now, what is this standard? Well, let's check it out. It is covered in this tweet stating... Microsoft oh boy, developers I didn't see that tweet. Female characters with exaggerated body proportions on their official site to support game devs. Mm -hmm. the site is titled as Product Inclusion Action Help Customers Feel Seen. <laughs> I cannot, man. Like, like, what is wrong with wanting anime characters? Like, what's wrong with, like, Bayonetta, by all standards, is very tall. And yet, it's, like, freaking amazing as a character. Why would you not want that? <laughs> Holy moly, that sounds like something that would be a conference at the latest game developers convention that was hosted in California. Like, product inclusion action. Why? Why do we have that? Why do we need to police how people make their bloody games? And why why are people falling for this shit in the first place? Because, like, it's marketing. They're going to say the words inclusive just for marketing's sake. Last week. This is the epitome of woke. This is... 
for me, it just literally screams capitalist. It just screams there's a market that we didn't bleed dry yet. So we're going to try to take the money from that market as well now. Without actually giving a flying fuck about you. Game developers and their bosses basically telling you that these character designs like Eve and the real life woman she's based on are something that is exaggerated <laughs> and unrealistic and something that should not be shared with gamers. <laughs> well, duh. Y you know, it's like, it's exaggerated. Actual real life woman. Like, excuse me that not everyone is looking the same. Excuse me. And excuse the fact that the guy literally made his wife, I think, into the game. Like, what's wrong with that? The guy literally goes like, okay, this is the ideal woman for me. And I'm going to make the main character be that. I, what's wrong with it? If you don't want to play it, don't play it. Don't buy the game. Why do you need to police someone making a video game? This is absolutely outrageous and something that is made to solely impress woke developers and their bosses, not gamers who actually appreciate designs like Eve. Now, of course, we're talking about Microsoft, who only a few weeks ago on their official Xbox account was hounding after sexualized male character designs. <laughs> However, we've seen this policy in action from Microsoft over the years, at least in regards to female video game character designs. We've seen how Cortana has been changed over the ages from a more curvy design. Damn, can I say the fourth Cortana is actually pretty nice? Different model, his wife is also beautiful. Yeah, I've seen like his wife and his wife was really, really nice, like really pretty and everything. I, I, I don't understand why someone can't make something just based on what they think is ideal. Like it's something to aspire for, it's something to like, look to forward to. Here from the latest release in 2021. Now, moving forward, Niche Gamer would make an article capturing this entire situation, stating Microsoft cautions developers to avoid curvy female video game characters. I like how we have below. anime girls now in there. The article it says this, the site titled as Product Inclusion Action Help Customers Feel Seen includes a bullet list of considerations they urge developers to make when working on their products. One Twitter user pointed out the language expressly condemning certain female characters as reinforcing negative gender stereotypes. Now let's see that tweet in question. It says this. This is from Microsoft's new Gaming for Everyone production inclusion this is framework. This so sad, man. This is the song that didn't doesn't end. It's been like 10 years and they're still <laughs> complaining about video game boobs. No, they're not complaining about video game boobs. They're complaining about uh, ass too now, okay? They're complaining about the entire curviness. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You can see this actual quote saying, are you reinforcing any negative gender stereotypes? Here's the bullet point. What the fuck is a negative gender stereotype? Like, huh? Like, excuse me, it's a video game. We don't care. Like, I don't know who cares about this personally. Like, you don't want to play the game, just don't play it. Points. Are you unnecessarily introducing gender and gender barriers into your code or design? Are you creating playable female characters that are equal in skill and ability to their male peers and highlighted? Are you are your female oh boy. characters equipped with clothing and armor that fits their tasks? Do they have exaggerated body proportions? And what? Like seriously? Like, are your female characters equipped with clothing and armor that fit their task? Y you know, if I had to read this article, I would literally go, okay, so let's take your very inclusive let's be seen thing and go, are you creating playable male characters that are equal in skill and ability to their female peers? Like, why are we focusing so hard on the female side? What, because it's sexy? Because people like playing sexy characters and want to look at sexy things? 
what's next? We're not going to be allowed to watch anime because uh, it's unrealistic. We're not going to be able to have cartoons because they don't match the real life. Like, I don't understand this policing of how you're supposed to make your video game. It's a video game thing. Like, get the fuck out with needing to have everything match everything. And going forward, when the story allows, do you show male characters who display a full range of emotions, including joy, sadness, and vulnerability? Now, of course, we see the most important section about this exaggerated body proportions. Now, here is a slow-mo provided of Eve from What Stella the fuck Blade. is exaggerated now, on this? consider this to be exaggerated body proportions, likely based on the design of this character and the kind of woke terminology that like, they're using at Microsoft, it probably does fall under these exaggerated body proportions. Why? However, as most of you are probably already huh? aware since we've covered it on this channel, the design of Eve is based on a real life Korean model. They made a 3D scan of this model. So quite literally, it is a realistic body type. And they'll probably label something like that. No, it's not realistic. It's a model. It's unrealistic standards and models are not something that we should like look up to. Sarcasm, by the way. That is unrealistic because that's the <sighs> way people like Microsoft are. Now, moving forward, we've seen some other examples of companies like Pokemon Go doing some. I did not understand this, by the way. They have added more options. Like, I don't understand this personally like they changed a lot to make women just be androgynous you can't have curves you can't have like a sexy waist anymore why why is a sexy waist so bad i don't understand it for characters like this so let's read this tweet pokemon go company is esg approved 2024 changes Change the visceral cranium of the female, remove chest, modify hip, expand chin, Why? broaden her shoulders, delete makeup. The industry has been pushing androgyny, uh, specifically oriented to male features for years. They hate women. So here's the before and after, of course, making this character much more boxy looking and really just kind of bland looking. And this is real. It's a part of their like, testing app. No offense, but... The effort that these people put in destroying video games is honestly baffling to me. If you want to make a real change, how about you go after every single application that sells you enhancement features to change how you look? How about you go on every single platform like Instagram, TikTok, whatever, that has in-house app recording where you can change your breast size, your waist size, your hip size, your your skull shape, your nose size, like you can change your entire anatomical structure to change how you look, which is having more of a negative effect because a lot of those are enabled by default to beautify you. It has way more of a negative effect on how people view themselves than a fucking video game character. Like, excuse me, like... Why is this even a thing in video games? And changes will depend on feedback from social media. It's not made up. And depending on your location, you might see these options or not. Now, that is very curious. It's very odd and really eyebrow raising to people like me when these. It is to me as well. Are being only introduced to certain regions. Now, is it better than a <laughs> global release like we've seen with other changes in censorship? Maybe. But it's also very nefarious that they are just picking and choosing regions to apply these changes to without... Well, of course they're picking and choosing regions because they have to sell it based on what that demographic has as, as a majority. Like, first of all, if you start with a small region, it's a small group of people that are complaining and they, they're done complaining and raging by the time you move to another group. That's what Netflix did. Netflix changed the way that they allow people to, like households, are allowed to use Netflix. But they did it across two years in different countries and in different regions to the point where people didn't know about it until it hit them. 
So it wasn't a widespread negative effect. They did it slowly, introducing it over time. Like, and this is what's happening here. They're doing it slowly, introducing it in one region, then another, then another. And because of that, because the rage isn't localized, it's not happening all at the same time, it's being mitigated with their stock and everything else because people don't realize what's happening. Even fully disclosing where these regions are. But moving forward, if you look at the actual website that Microsoft is promoting, you can see some of these quotes on here that are very, very odd. So they say this right here. 80% of media is consumed, 80% of media consumed by the world is created in the United States. And yet most media, including video games, doesn't contain characters and content that align to that broad consumer. And you can see some statistics that they cite down here. 50% of players in the broader gaming market didn't play certain games because the games weren't made for them. Over half of the global gaming market. 50 <laughs> oh, I honestly wish I could see where exactly they got these studies from. Because, like, research shows people like to prefer characters that look like them. Really? What research? Into, into what gamers? Because... Excuse me, as a as a gamer since I was a freaking toddler, uh every almost every single guy I've known wants to play a freaking sexy smoking hot chick. And uh as women like to shout and uh, complain on the internet, uh, gaming is a male industry, it's male dominated. So if all the if most guys want to play a female character, what the fuck is this research about? 53% of developers felt diversity in storytelling should be a priority and it was ranked as the third most important factor in industry growth. Storytelling. 40% of retail consumers have sh <laughs> Storytelling, the thing that most people don't give a flying frick about if a game is good and the gameplay is good? Yeah shifted 10% or more of their business away from brands that do not reflect their own value in diversity and inclusion. Now that's very odd because we know that a lot of very successful games have not relied on the race of the character even being relevant. Think about Halo, for example, okay? Let's talk about Xbox related games. The reason <laughs> Master Chief was so beloved for many, many years was because nobody knew the identity of Master Chief. Everybody related to the character because that character could be anyone. It could be them. It could be someone else. It could be this skin, this type of skin, or whatever. It didn't matter because it was Master Chief. You believed in the character. And despite what the Paramount Plus show might do by revealing <laughs> the identity of Master Chief, that's one of the reasons why that character was so beloved and so popular oh, man. for so many years. And I don't really believe a lot of these statistics. I don't do believe really, them either. That's fair to say because a lot of these studies right here that are used as references have been openly memed on and criticized for many years. And that's pointed out in this thread right here. So based on some of the statistics Jesus shared Christ. in those studies, as this user points out, this study, if the numbers are correct, would mean that 20 million gamers have been swatted as results of X, Y, or Z. Basically the toxic gaming culture. Jesus that Christ. doesn't seem to add up. Yeah, there's some very extreme circumstances like that happening. But really 20 million gamers have had this happen i don't really believe that it makes me question a lot of these statistics and studies that they're citing at microsoft but moving forward we see some i don't know very man positive things. it's like so it's so weird because like i've never associated like okay i i realize i'm a minority because i don't give a flying fuck how my character looks i don't care about how the mtx is i don't care how pretty my character is i don't care what it is i don't care about this gender i don't care about anything i just care about gameplay but like it's so weird to me hearing that oh it's not inclusive enough then just make a game that is why why do you need to change how the games that people make why do you need to make them marketable I don't understand that part. Like, people make video games because they love making video games. They don't make video games to sell the product. You don't make a video game with the idea, I'm going to sell the product. And this is what's happening. They're literally saying, well, we want you to sell the product to this market because they're most likely to purchase it. So change your product for them. 
seconds. This is a actual clip involving the shift up director here. So you can see this is an interview asking them basically what their goal is as developers. What are they trying to create with their games and what is most important to them? And this will give you some faith in an industry that is definitely going backwards. 독창성, 새것, 재해석. 그러니까 답습하지 않겠다는 거고 양산형이 되지 않겠다는 거잖아요. 네. 그 마인드 자체로도 되게 희망적으로 들립니다. 자, 김영태 대표님에게 게임이란 무엇인가요? 어, 저한테 게임은 모든 것이죠. 모든 것. 예. Gaming 어, is everything. 저는 게임을 만드는 것 외에 음. 취미가 어. 없습니다. 어 게임 개발 덕후다. <웃음> 예, 예. 그래서 <웃음> 게임을 하는 것보다도 만드는 것에 더 재미를 느끼고 있고요. 그래서 제 인생의 모든 것이기 때문에 허투루 할수 없는 음, 음. 그런 것이 바로 저한테는 게임이지 않나 싶습니다. That's 가장 really passionate, 즐거운 honestly. 순간이죠. 즐거운 순간 게임 개발. 어 이브와 이케 예, 모든 걸 쏟아 부을 예정. This is the person that did Nike. Damn. Make sense. <laughs> Make sense. I didn't know that was the person that so was behind this one. That the product they are working on at Shift Up, Stellar Blade, is a product that is reflecting some very good intentions behind the directors creating it. It is something very positive. There is a reason why people are so excited for Stellar Blade. It is providing content that gamers want that reflects the wants of the directors and developers and this is a cohesion of those wants and needs, and it's exploding mm. in popularity. It shouldn't be that surprising. It's a simple formula. Give gamers what they want and be passionate about providing those needs. And that's exactly what Shift Up is doing. And that's why so many people are excited about this upcoming release. Honestly, like that's the thing that we had that you saw with Pal World, with Helldivers, with Stellar Blade now. People simply, like, we got games that were made with passion just for that sake. And, like, Helldivers, right? They they said they're just gonna ban politics. If you're gonna get political over playing the fucking game, they're just gonna ban you. And it's just, like, developers that just say, we want this for the game. We don't care about putting certain things to upsell our our product or to cater to certain audiences. We don't want that in our game. We don't want politics, which is kind of funny given the game's topic. But yeah, like more developers should be like this. Sadly, Microsoft also now owns a fuck ton of studios, which is pretty concerning given all the things that they're saying and but of course this whole situation wanting to is change to see the standard of avoiding curvy female characters by microsoft is concerning to say the least and something that's is reflective is. of a lot of issues going on in the gaming industry but for now that's going to do it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed as always feel free to share your thoughts about today's topics they've squandered all the studios though i don't know i don't know man like they're still they're still getting out there and getting... I, I don't want to sound mean, but because of the change that they're doing, and they already bled dry the gamers. So now what they're doing is changing the shift so that they can get all the people that care about inclusivity in this method, right? In this style. They want to bleed those people dry too. Like what they're doing is simply shifting the market that they're catering for so that they can get more money. That's at least what it feels like to me, which is sad. <laughs> like, yes, they, they did fuck up all the studios. They did fire a lot of people. You see a lot of the problems with, with Blizzard. They fired a lot of people and now they're rehiring for the same positions with a different mindset and different goal. So we're just going to have a lot of games that are just trying to sell you something, trying to sell you an agenda, which in my opinion is kind of sad.